That's right, guys, I am selling the dark side. This is the dark side. She's a 1997 Hatteras 52 extended to 60 feet. She's powered by twin Detroit diesel 8V92 engines. She's capable of making 18 knots, but I normally cruise her around 10 knots for fuel, which burns about 15 gallons an hour. She's offered for sale for $350,000 with the high field dinghy included. That's right, I am selling my boat and going home, but just for a little bit. She is a 1997 uh, Hatteras motor yacht, a Hatteras 52. Actually, she's been custom extended to 60 feet with the addition of the aft cockpit. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you a very in-depth and extensive tour, go over all the parts of the boat. So if you are interested, you can take a look at it. Um, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing it first. Uh, this boat is great for cruising coastal, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, all that stuff. You wanna do the Great Loop, I mean, this is your boat. I wanna cross oceans again. Uh, I wanna do a circumnavigation and this boat just can't do that it doesn't have the range uh, you know I mean this boat has about a six or seven hundred mile range you could probably squeeze it about to seven or eight hundred if you really wanted to going slower um, but an ocean is 2,700 miles. So that, that boat will not do that. So I'm gonna sell this boat. I've actually already got a deposit down on a sailing catamaran. I will get more into that when I can release the, release the details, but I can't just yet. And there is a link down in the description if you are interested in purchasing it. Uh, it gives you some more information on the boat and all that and how to contact on that. And uh, the asking price for everything you see here, uh, minus personal stuff, obviously, uh, including the dinghy, the high field dinghy, is uh, $350,000. All right, starting on on the bow, nice little pulpit here. Uh, it's really cool for hanging out underway. I like doing it. Um, really, you know, solid, what, inch, inch uh, stainless tubing all the way around, makes it really secure when you're up here. Uh, this is the standby anchor. It is a steel uh, Danforth anchor, so it's pretty heavy. I'm not exactly sure the weight of it, but it is nice and solid. It's attached to a couple hundred feet of road uh, rope, basically. And then below that, this is the Mantis 120 pound, 120 pound uh, Mantis Marine, uh, I think it's the M1 or M2 anchor. I'm not sure the exact model, uh, but this thing's really heavy and it grabs really well. I really enjoyed having this thing. I, it was one of the upgrades I did on it, as well as add the swivel and then 300 feet of 3 8 inch chain uh, attached to this uh, galley made windlass. I changed out, it had a quarter inch chain. Uh, I changed it out for the 3 8 inch, put a new gypsy on it, and uh, the, the windlass can be controlled with foot pedals here or I can control it from the helm station, or as we'll get to later, it has an aft cockpit with a control on it as well. And so it does have 300 feet of this 3 8 inch chain. Honestly, I would, uh, you probably should cut off about 50 feet of that because the last 50 feet, um, it will, there's just not enough space in the chain longer and it'll kind of, it'll uh, castle on itself the last 50 feet. So honestly, that's what I would do. I mean, if I were to keep this boat, uh, I would cut off 50 feet of chain so that it pulls in a little better. Coming back a little bit, I do have four fender holders and the boat does come with six of the uh, big, uh, I'm not sure, I think they're 18 inch fenders, but they're pretty, uh, pretty robust and those things are expensive. So it comes with them. Those things are like 120, 30 bucks each. Um, but so it's really nice, convenient to put those there. Plus we tie on a couple more when we're underway. And it does have these two storage boxes here. Um, on one on either side and we keep things like uh, our shore power cables and our bridle and cleaners and waxes and all that stuff in there and our dock lines when we're not on the dock so it's really nice having that extra storage on deck for that uh, coming back aft it does have the hatch to the forward vip cabin uh, so you can get a lot of airflow like um, you know if, if it's nice outside you can leave the doors open in the back open this up and you get airflow all the way through the boat it does have uh, this uh, eight person life raft uh, um, it probably needs to be inspected. I honestly, I've never inspected it. I don't know what the date is on it, but I imagine it's uh, out of date. So on the other side over here, we do have paddleboard racks, which is really nice to have. We just put our paddle boards on there and we can drop them straight in the water. Back here, it does have this like sun cover to keep the, the sun out of the in inside salon. Uh, and it, a spotlight, the spotlight does not work. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't even, I've never even attempted to use it or to fix it. So if that's something you wanna do, 
by all means. Uh, and that is pretty much the bow of the boat. We can move a little bit more down here. Moving just a little bit further aft, uh, we do have a little gate here for coming in and out. A boarding ladder if you're at a, at a lower dock and your side tied onto it uh, that you can just hook on to these mounts right there. The shore power, um, basically it connects midships here. You, the cool thing about this is that you can connect the boat to shore power on the port side or the starboard side, wherever's more convenient for you. So we are side tied here on the port side, so we've got it connected, our shore power cable on this side. The other side uh, works just as well, um, although it actually works a little better because it has an auto coiler, so it's about 40 feet long um, where you can auto coil the uh, cable in and out. So like right now we've got our 50 foot space cable on for the port side on the other side the auto coiler we can just <clears throat> coil it out automatically and then coil it back in which is really nice but the controls for all that are in the, these little hatches on each side right here the boat does have three water tanks honestly I'm not sure of the total tankage I think it's around 300 gallons it has two water tanks on each side here and then one in the back so the port side water tank fill is here the fuel the fuel tank fills are all, all on the starboard side and it has five fuel tanks uh, it has uh, a 300 gallon tank in the very aft for the generator, although we can move that fuel forward. And then it does have four fuel tanks um, for the motors themselves. It has a, a 480 gallon tank, a 290, uh, a 260, and then a 75 gallon reserve tank. So it carries about 1300 gallons of fuel total, including the aft generator tank. These windows here, gets a lot of light inside. It's got blinds on the inside. We'll kind of show you on the inside. I would probably it's probably going to be necessary to reseal these windows there's a couple ways we can board the boat here uh, like I said through this way we have the ladder if we need to this comes up we come in and off right here and then we can also board the boat from the back and I'll show you that later but let's move back to the uh, salon in here all right this is kind of the main hangout area of the boat it actually gets a lot of airflow uh, so we have the two doors forward and then these windows will actually all slide open all the way so you can open these windows up get a lot of airflow through here and then of course this this will unzip if you wanted to do more of that. But the kind of cool thing is, is that if you wanted to close all this up, close the doors, close on the windows, this room has its own air conditioning unit. So if it's really hot out, you're gonna be at the dock for a while and you wanna hang out kind of outside, you can air condition this entire area. So it's really nice. It has, you know, I don't know, eight, nine lights through here. It's got LED lighting around the windows. Give it that kind of, uh, mood lighting. Um, the furniture is kind of all wicker came with it. Uh, we store all our toys and stuff back here, like our paddle, our, you know, life jackets and floats and all that stuff. And then on the other side over here, we keep our uh, scuba gear. And then on this side, we also store our, uh, we call them Oscar, little floating dock. Well, a couple of the things uh, that make this really nice, because you got a TV on this side. Uh, this is a little outdoor refrigerator and ice maker. It's so nice having ice on the boat. So we keep all our mixers and things like that, plus we make ice really nice to have on the boat. It has a little wet bar right here so you can get water. Um, and cups and all that stuff and sunscreen we keep all that stuff here uh you know easy use i have replaced uh, it's got two speakers in the cockpit plus a subwoofer those are all brand new replaced them um, myself and then underneath the sink here uh it has like uh, kind of a bottle storage area for all your liquors and such on the other side over here is where the subwoofer is and then just more storage uh we kind of keep cleaning supplies and stuff like that in here. We also have, it's not really included, but it's kind of a cool thing to have. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be a deal breaker if you really wanted it, but we keep uh, a little refrigerator out here plugged in, and that is kind of like my beer fridge. All right, now we're gonna move back to one of the unique features of this boat and kind of the upgrade of all the other Hatteras 52s you'll see is this aft cockpit. Okay, so this this is the addition to the boat. The normal boat ended like right here. So this is eight feet longer than your normal Hatteras 52. So now it's a 60 foot long boat, and you get so much extra with this because not only is this great for fishing if you're a big fisherman on the on the standard header is 52 it's just a drop off and you might have a little swim platform pretty much impossible to fish from on this you have all this space with rod holders this door opens up and swings out 
and then you can haul in your fish or whatever you need to do. Plus then you have a nice little swim platform for jumping in the water, which I'm looking forward to doing. It's hot out here. All right, so with uh, the addition back here, you get a bunch of extra things that your standard boat does not have. Uh, you have a little wet bar right here. Well, it needs to be clean, but uh, you have water right there and you know trash can here. Uh, and then one of the really cool features on this boat is aft repeating controls, right? So I can steer the boat from back here. I have access to my bow thruster. I have my transmission and my throttles. I can control my windlass back here. I have a little meter that reads depth. I can stop the engines, or I can start and stop the engines from back here. So when you're backing into a slip, having this right here so you can see and do all this from back here is really great because on your standard Hatter 52, you're way up there and you can hardly see the back of the boat. So this is really nice to have. Um, storage all under here. We keep all our like dive fins and snorkels and all that. And one of the really cool features of having this half cockpit here is that this is a second generator. So it has a 20 kilowatt generator up that lives up in the engine room. And this is a 12 and a half kilowatt generator. It'll power pretty much everything on the boat. I mean, I've never run more than two or three air conditioners at a time. I've never run all five at the same time. I don't know, but it's really nice having the spare generator because it's a lot quieter than the other one because it's out here and it's more fuel efficient and you just have a backup, which is really nice. Uh, you also get, uh, it's underneath here, you can't really see them, but you get an extra 300 gallons of diesel here and another 100 gallons of water here. Uh, and then, of course, you can step up and down here. You want to get off and on the dock from here, you can. And then a couple little steps right here. And then more storage underneath for all this stuff here. So it's really convenient to have, and your normal boat will not have this. I'm really cool and really, that's, this is the reason I bought this boat, is because it had this aft cockpit. All right, one more section of the boat to go through, the helm station up here. Welcome to the helm station area here. You have your two captain's chairs and then seating all around on either side. All these windows will unzip, but most Mostly we just unzip this one, the two side ones and the back ones to get airflow through here. And it does a pretty good job of that. But it's nice to have it enclosed when it's uh, wet or a lot of spray. So, uh, and then these seats are pretty comfortable to get up and in. You drive the boat from right here. Uh, everything you'd need, uh, we have, an, it has a Simrad autopilot, uh, hydraulically driven. Um, your controls right here, your throttles are on this side and your uh, transmission is on the starboard side. It has wind instruments. Uh, it is not currently working. Uh, that would be an upgrade if you would like to do. Uh, it does have three chart plotters. It has two uh, Garmin uh, GPS 7. They got a 720 and a 721. The 721 is currently not working. I'm not sure what the problem is. I haven't had time to delve into it. it might be just a power issue. But it has a brand new 9-inch Garmin that I installed and also installed a brand new uh, HD 20 uh radar as well so that works pretty well uh, depth meter boat speed all that stuff it does have your stabilizer controls right here uh, which is really nice so uh, it has fin stabilizers so fins on each side they're hydraulically driven and if the boat starts to heel over it'll it'll push that fin up and push you back the other way and works really well underway uh, at anchor it doesn't work at all because um, you need to be moving forward to do it and it needs hydraulic power so it does not do that all your switches and your build bilge pumps and your ignitions and your lights and uh, all that stuff are on this panel as well uh, and then you can access under here to get to all the wiring you just got to crawl around it's not too bad. Brand new ICOM VH, uh, VHF, uh, that's the ICM506. I installed that. I also installed that Garmin 9 inch chart plotter and, like I said, the radar. And so, those are the upgrades I've done on the, avi on the avionics, on the boat uh, marine. Uh, navigation equipment and has all your displays here. The motors, uh, the, the RPM gauges do work here. Um, the uh, digits are kind of, it's hard to see during daytime to see the actual uh, fuel flow and all that. At night, you can see them. You probably need to have the LCDs replaced on that. I'm actually not 100% sure of the hours on the engine because uh, the uh, the mechanical ones uh, were disconnected at 730 hours, and I believe the digital ones I'd have to see uh, have around 1700 hours on each engine. So add the two together around 2400 uh, hours, I'm, I'm guessing, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So 
it is what it is. All right, uh, and it, do, it does have a stereo system, uh, a, a zone for speakers up here. To get access to the dinghy, you kind of have to crawl up here. It's not the most convenient, but it's how we access to get to the dinghy. Up here uh, is where we store the dinghy. Uh, it's uh, the Highfield uh, Sport 360. So it's about 12 feet long. It has a 40 horse Tohatsu motor on it, chart plotter, stereo, all the bells and whistles, uh, bilge pump, all that stuff, uh, underwater lights. It's pretty cool and lights on the inside. It does have a hydraulic crane here that's rated to 1500 pounds. This thing weighs 750, so it handles it no problem. We just use the crane, lift it up and on here. And then on the other side, um, behind you, we have uh, my new radar and then kind of the rooftop area where you can hang out and, uh, you know, get some sun while you're underway or just hanging out. It's really nice. We love watching the sunset from up there. And we all, and then Dingy also has a ski pole. It's really good for pulling a skier, but the 40 horsepower does no problem. All right, it's hot one out here, so let's go inside and I'll show you the inside of the boat. This is the main salon area, really comfortable with the custom made couches that go all the way around. There's actually storage under all these right here you lift this up and store whatever you need under each little section the couch is really comfortable um, and you get a good amount of light all the way around the blinds do close if we want like we had the sun coming in from there earlier today so um, i replaced this had carpet i replaced it with this tile um, and then i replaced a lot of the lighting so all the lights have been redone with leds put led trim around the sides uh replaced all the new stereo and everything because it had like an old like vhs tapes and you know regular tapes and stuff like that uh and also i replaced uh to a brand new refrigerator it was not easy getting that in here um but really comfortable space in here great for entertaining um it has a flat screen tv uh everything's got uh wi-fi so uh so it has a wi-fi network for the boat and a wi-fi extender to grab wi-fi from the dock or whatever you need and it also has a uh cell phone signal booster that built into the boat that's always on um so so if you're, you know, it's got the antenna up on the top and then another antenna on and here for uh, helping you with your phone service. Um, the, the control panels and everything for your uh, circuit breakers, you have your AC panel here. DC panel on this side. So now it has a brand new fusion sound system with a thousand amp uh, or thousand watt amp and built in or added on to it. Uh, subwoofer down here as well. Uh, this used to be like an old square TV and all the old stereo and all that. So put a new panel on here, new TV. This is your, uh your main power distribution panel right here so you can switch everything over you can select where you want all your power to come from uh you know you can select if you want the port side or the starboard side short power uh and things of that nature you can either select 240 or 120 in depending on where you are and on this side over here you have your generator controls so uh you can do aft generator, center generator, um, forward generator, and then your two stop and start panels here for your generators. Uh, so all the power distribution is right here. There's 120 outlets everywhere throughout the boat, so it's pretty convenient. And it's just a really comfortable place to sit in here. I love it because when I'm in here, I can uh, basically pretend I'm not on a boat for a while. And I can just, like I'm in an apartment somewhere and sometimes you need that when you're out on a boat. In the galley here, uh, it's a nice little space, I mean, more than two people in here you can't really do but you can have you can do a little bit in here it's got under counter, counter lighting you have kind of uh just spices and you know we keep you know cans and stuff for you know whatever we need here this is actually a trash compactor uh it works we just don't use it uh i would honestly love to replace that thing with a dishwasher um storage under here this is kind of our little pantry area there and then we have pots and pans and everything on this side uh a two burner cooktop um convection microwave oven so it'll do the oven and stuff as well plus we have a little portable oven that we hook up sometimes uh and new refrigerator right so they had one from 1997 this is a 2020 model 2021 model so uh hopefully it'll last for a nice long time and of course we've got little um attachments on it to keep it from opening and moving when underway uh, it does have a uh, full sink here with a, uh, well, a little wand and it has purified drinking water with a Seagull 4 drinking water system so that uh, you can always have clean water to drink. Uh, more storage for pots and or plates and cups and all that there. You have your silverware and your utensils and all these things over here. It's a pretty usable space for the galley. 
And it does have uh, a uh, disposal in the sink so you can put stuff down it and out. And right underneath me is where our brand new water maker where it lives. It does 37 gallons an hour uh, and it's pretty simple to use. Rain Man, it's 2021 model, just installed it. Works really well, fills up the boat with water and it, you know, so we always have nice uh, drinking water. Uh, we do have, I mean, we just, we just went grocery shopping to provision for the next month. So we have a ton of stuff up here right now. Um, but I tell you one thing it's always, it's nice to have is just having a full size freezer. I mean, on a boat, having a full size freezer is nice. And then the ice maker outside, pretty awesome. So, uh, all right, let me come over here. This is just kind of, excuse the mess. I, this is my workstation. You can have it as your dining room or your breakfast table, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, this I have set up for my office and this is where I do all my work because we normally, if we're gonna eat, we eat outside in the, in the salon. So uh, it does have a really big air conditioning unit for this room. Uh, I'm not sure how many BTUs, I think it's like 18,000 BTUs. It'll keep basically the whole boat co cool. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we're not even running the forward air conditioner right now, um, but it, it stays nice and cool down here. Uh, let's go forward. Uh, oh, while we're here, it does have a washer and dryer. It's a stackable unit. Um, so you got the washer on bottom. It's not a stackable, it's an all-in-one. Not an all-in-one, it's a, I don't even know what you call this kind, but it's a twin. So it's got a washing machine down here and a dryer. And I don't know if you've never had, if you've been cruising and you've never had a washer dryer on a boat, it makes a really big difference having it. And I, any boat I have from now on will have one of these. And so now we can come forward to the forward cab, VIP cabin. Uh, so this is the Ford VIP cabin. It has its own hatch up here, so it gets lots of light. It actually has like a little vent we can put there too if we want to keep it darker to close things off. Uh, good amount of space, kind of a partial walk around. You can come around the side. I believe this is a queen size bed. I'm not sure what this is called. I don't know. Um, but you sleeps two people comfortably. It does have a good amount of uh, drawer space here. You have drawers underneath here and here on each side. There's four there. And it has a pretty, you know, more drawers each side of the bed uh, and then reading lights on the back. And uh, on the back there, let's see here. There we go. So reading lights on each side. Um, uh, you access the chain locker behind that beautiful painting. It's installed. I think that's just wonderful. Don't you like it? Um, and <laughs> it does have a decent amount of closet space uh, on this side and then a smaller closet on this side over here. Uh, it does have its own air conditioner for just this cabin as well. Uh, and attached to that is its own head right over here. Uh, so this will just close up and it's a pretty good, decent sized shower with a seat inside. It has a vacuum flush toilet. So you turn it on over here uh, and it creates, it starts a vacuum punch, pump, which I just replaced the vacuum pump on this toilet. And then when you flush, it's a vacuum flush system that uh, just sucks everything out down into the holding tank. Um, I would, not leave that pump on um, because uh, this head, I, I believe maybe one of the valves in the toilet itself is leaking a little air. So if you leave that suction on, it just keeps running the whole time. That's one thing if you're gonna buy the boat, maybe have that checked out to see uh, where the air leak is coming. It's not like leaking poo or anything. It's just sucking an air into the system. And so it, that pump runs all the time. So we just make sure we turn it off. Uh, and then, uh, you know, your typical behind the mirror stuff and under the sink. And yeah, it's not a bad little space. All right, coming down and aft, uh, the last couple cabins, including the master cabin, uh, right here on this side is a bunk room. Uh, right now we just have it set up for storage. So we got all our suitcases and spares and food and all that stuff in here. Uh, uh, but you know, it has its own air conditioner, just actually had that uh, serviced and replaced. Uh, so it is working well now too. It has a pretty good sized closet, which we keep our wetsuits in, and then there's storage under the bed. It has its own head on this side, which is even a little bit bigger than the VIP head. This would be the ones that guests and company use. Uh, same size shower is over there, uh, and it's pretty nice. Same vacuum flush system. This one does seal well, so you can just leave the vacuum pump on if you'd like. Um, and each toilet does have its own vent too, so it has like a little air, a little fan that sucks everything out. Uh, and it's a good size uh, head. Almost the last thing, we're gonna go to the engine room last, but come on here to the master cabin. It it is quite spacious. 
Uh, just, you know, full walk around, queen size bed, really comfortable. I put a new mattress topper on it. It's, it's I mean, it's the most comfortable bed I've slept in. Um, and it just has drawers on either side uh, with lots of space on either side. There's like three drawers on each side, plus you can store stuff underneath it if you want. Um, there is not room under the bed for storage because that's where uh, the fuel tanks, one of the fuel tanks is. Um, and uh, reading lights on each side, lots of nice light in here. We kind of have these uh, LED lights going around the side too. It has a really nice big bathroom ahead with its own, it actually has a bathtub. So it's a shower tub combo, so you can do that. It does have a hot water heater, like a 110 volt, plus it'll also take engine heat. Um, so you always have hot water, which is really nice. And uh, I mean, it's just a really nice space. And then on the other side over here has a full walk-in closet. And, you know, just, I mean, where do you get that on a boat, right? And then uh, there's LCD or LED TV, LED TVs in each of the bedrooms. And of course in the salon and upstairs as well. Uh, so just I mean, for living, I mean, it doesn't even feel like you're living on a boat when you're back here. It feels like you're just in a small apartment. All right, so finally here is the last thing we're gonna show you is the engine compartment. It's got, uh, so we can come on down here. Kind of the nice thing here is that it's a uh, full size, you know, I can stand up in here uh, and work around, work on things. It's got uh, engine room. So twin Detroit diesel, 720 horsepower each. Uh, eight, you know, V8s, uh, they are two stroke. So you get basically every every stroke is a power stroke. Uh, it's a little complicated on how that works. If you, you can Google it and figure it out eventually, but it's got one exhaust valve. It's different than your standard engine. It's not like a regular two stroke where it's like uh, the oil is mixed in with the fuel. It's actually got a separate sump and all that. Um, but so um, it's got got your four air conditioner chillers out there plus there has one separate air conditioner for the small cabin so each bedroom has its own air conditioner plus the salon has one plus the upstairs salon has one and the 20 kilowatt uh, onan generator is in here um, and so that works really well we'll power everything in the boat uh, toolboxes, spares, all the stuff you'll need is in here and the batteries and the ship service and the breakers and stuff are on this side over here. Okay, the only other things I can think of that we didn't actually show you, it does have a bow thruster under there with its own battery charger and everything. I didn't like take you down into the bilges and all that, but uh, if you'd like more information, you can. Um, but there you have it. The boat is for sale. There's a link down in the description if you'd like to have it. Uh, we're gonna be taking it over to South Florida in mid-June. If you're on the East Coast somewhere, we can talk about it if you're interested. Maybe I can bring it up to you or wherever you're going, so let me know. Uh, 350,000 when I was, I'm asking for it. Um, so so I hope you guys like it, and it's a really fun boat. I've enjoyed my time. I oh man, it's been 18 months. If it, if it wasn't for the fact that I was going across, wanted to cross the Pacific again, I would definitely keep this boat. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.